So this past weekend, in addition to the major heavyweight fight that took place in Wales, was a pretty significant fight on the on the pretty much the under the other side of the scales, the other the other side of the rate spectrum, uh, between Kose Tanaka, the former WBO minimum weight champion, as well as WBO light flyweight champion, making his flyweight debut, um, or at least his flyweight debut proper. I'll get to that in a second. Against uh, Manny Pacquiao promotions prospect, undefeated prospect, Ronnie Baldonado. Um, they came into the fight with a very similar record. Uh, Baldonado 10 0 and 1 with 7 knockouts, and Kosei Tanaka with a record of 10 0 with 6 knockouts. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, Tanaka was a world champion at 105 pounds as well as 108 pounds. Um, you know, very, very quickly moving up the ranks, uh, moving, uh, moving up the, the weight classes, and collecting belts, you know, very early on. Um, he did have a previous fight, uh, technically at flyweight, against Rene Patelano between his um, his excursions at 105 and 108 pounds. Um, you know, he vacated his 105 pound title. Uh, basically, took kind of a stay busy catch weight fight, ostensibly against uh, Patelano between his fights with uh, Vic Soledad, uh, which was his final defense of his 105 pound belt. And then before moving up to 108 pounds to fight for the vacant title against former champion himself, uh, Moises Fuentes, who he uh, pretty handily um, beat down and stopped in five rounds. Uh, you know, of course, he recently vacated his belt, and it was won uh, by Angela Costa. Uh, that still being the only loss on Acosta's record, the only blemish on Acosta's record, considering the fact that he's won all of his fights by knockout. Um, but Costa Danaka here against Ronnie Baldonado, uh, you know, it was, it was definitely going to be a test to see um, how his power carried up, as well as how he kind of fared against a bigger, stronger type of opponent. Albeit, uh, Ronnie Baldonado is a guy that himself has fought um, several fights at 108 pounds uh, and has only had a couple of uh, recent fights at 112 or thereabouts himself. You know, he, you can even tell at the weigh-in, you know, these are pretty much two guys of about the same size. Um, if anything, Jose Danaka might actually be just slightly bigger than Baldonado in, in, spite, of his, uh, in spite of his lack of... Um, general experience at flyweight um, just by virtue of kind of, you know, eyeing and seeing, seeing like who really carried the, the, the muscle and or who looked a bit softer at the, at the weight, um, both at the weigh-in as well as in the ring. But um, Kosei Tanaka shined in, in this fight, I thought. Uh, looked really good. Um, even early on, uh, Baldonado was really trying to try, test him, see what he had. Um, but Tanaka was showing really good defense, a lot better defense than he showed in his last fight against Rangsan uh, Kayanram. Um, who I thought he was very reckless against. Um, you know, when he fought Moises Fuentes, when he fought Angel Acosta, his defense was very much on point. Um, his defense is very highly reliant, however, on his feet. He doesn't show a tremendous amount of head movement, but it seems like he is adding a bit more head movement to his game as well, which is something that's definitely going to be necessary um, considering the, the fact that he's kind of like a mid-range to inside type of a fighter. Um, in spite of the the fact that um, he's a little, slightly on the taller side, at least as it stands right now, you know, being five foot four and a half um, as a flyweight, uh, you know, the, he's he's actually a little bit more uh, average size that as a flyweight as compared to when he was a strawweight, where he pretty much uh, was taller than than most of the the opponents, the most of the top contenders there even. Uh, but here against Baldonado, uh, Baldonado was a bit of a free swinging type of a fighter. Um, I think uh, he was chosen very specifically uh, in order to potentially prepare prepare Kosei Tanaka to fight against the WBO champion uh, Shokimura because uh, he fought in a relatively similar manner. You know, he's a very sw free swinging kind of a wide hooking type of a fighter, really throwing a lot into all of his shots. But Tanaka very much uh, just kind of sharp shot him. You know, just just quick sharp shots up the middle, um, good combinations, good hooks to the body, hooks to the body, and then the head following up off of it. A sharp jab and good lateral movement. Um, just a, lo a lot of good movement, better head movement, as I mentioned before. And he pretty much soundly outboxed uh, Baldonado throughout the fight. Um, Baldonado did have a, a mixed bag of success. Uh, both in the, I'd say, maybe early on in the first couple of rounds, he had a, a couple of instances where he was able to get off uh, some pretty good shots. As well as um, later on in the fight, um, as uh, Tanaka was really turning it up, uh, Baldonado was able to catch him with a couple of... Um, counters he was able to kind of goad him in because he was dropping his hands and you know kind of uh, looking to just land like one kind of a Hail Mary type bomb on uh, Tanaka in order to try and you know change things around. Um, Tanaka did score a really good knockdown in the fourth round looked like he might be close to stopping in that round um, landed a really sharp left hook to the body uh, followed it up with a with a flurry of shots and then another sharp hook, left hook to the body put Baldonado down Baldonado was able to get back up 
um, covered up really nicely, but I mean, he was like hunched over for half of the round, and he was <laughs> looking like he was uh, he was really worse for the wear. But he was uh, eventually able to kind of recover from that. Um, you know, he showed a, a pretty good amount of punch resistance. Other than that, um, throughout the fight, he was taking some really heavy shots from from Tanaka. Although you know, Tanaka, um, even though he has shown himself to be a bit of a body snatching type of fighter, um, you gotta you also have to realize too that you know, moving up in weight that that power may not necessarily go as far. So whereas he may have been able to flatten a couple of these guys at 105 and even 108 with one or two shots, um, it might take a little bit more of a follow-up at 112 pounds. And then, you know, even if he moves up beyond that, because he has said, as I've mentioned, that he said in the past, you know, ultimately he himself has said that he wants to become a five-weight world titleist. You know, um, he would be the first ever Japanese fighter to do so. Um, would would do, potentially even do so even before uh, you know the likes of Nai Inoue, who's a bit um, better known and uh, more renowned at the very least, more critically acclaimed uh, thus far. Although I mean Tanaka's really not too far behind him as far as I'm concerned. Um, he's definitely shown himself to be just a fierce competitor and somebody that's really looking to not waste very much time and um, go after the the big money and fame and fortune and all those things uh, very very quickly. You know, definitely living up to the to what we've seen recently especially in, uh, in uh, Japanese championship-level boxing, Japanese world-level boxing at, at the very least, um, from the likes of Kazuto Yoka going forward. Um, but uh, Tanaka did really well, um, was able to eventually stop Baldonado in the ninth round of this fight, and um, just overall just did a really, really good job. Um, you know, th there was one round in the sixth where it looked like he was trying to catch his breath a little bit, um, like he might be a little bit arm weary, especially from the the flurry that he had in the fourth and the fifth round where he was really just laying into to Baldonado. But um, he did a really good job, I thought, of kind of knowing when to temper his pace a little bit, pacing himself better, um, using much better defense. He was able to catch a lot of Baldonado's shots with his gloves. Um, and then he was also able to even roll some of the shots that did hit him. And otherwise, you know, as I mentioned with the head movement earlier, was able to make Baldonado miss quite a few of those shots as well, which is something I think he's definitely going to be needing going forward because, um, you know, from here on out, he's going to be fighting bigger fighters with bigger punches, um, with, you know, potentially better stamina, better stamina in throwing those bigger shots. You know, you got you guys like, as, as I mentioned before, Shokimura, who is just a nonstop aggressor, throwing all kinds of bombs at you. You know, he's managed to stop two Olympians in a row in Zoshiming. And in his last fight as well, you have Daigo Higa out there with just heavy-handed brute force, you know, like, like a like a mini Golovkin back when Golovkin was kind of first, you know, bursting onto the scene for, on the on the HBO side of things. Um, you have uh, Dani Nietes even, you know, just a, a crafty veteran with a big punch of his own. Um, and then even if you if you're talking about the the WBA champion Arzim Delaki, even though I rate him a little bit lower than the other. Um, Titleist, um, you know, a guy that with a reasonably good uh, punch, and uh, you know, he's he's very fit and strong for the weight class. Um, so you know, Tan Tanaka definitely has to utilize that that defense um, going forward, and it looks like he has the skills to. Um, you know, against uh, Kyan Ram, considering the fact that he was he wound up with two broken orbital bones at the end of that fight, um, even though he didn't necessarily respect Kyan Ram's power, he probably should have. You know, he really probably should have because that was damage that he didn't necessarily have to take. And he really shouldn't have taken, you know, even though he didn't necessarily think that Kyan Ram posed the same level of knockout threat to him as he might have thought that Moises Fuentes did and that Angel Acosta definitely would have. Um, I think he really should have played it a little bit smarter in that fight with his, uh, with his defensive um, stature, or at the very least mi mixing the defense with his offense better in that fight as opposed to just kind of bullying forward and just taking whatever um, Kyan Ram gave him in order to land his own shots. But here against um, Baldonado, I thought he showed just a... Everything, you know, was hidden on 100. You know, he was, he was, it was a very good performance from him, a dominant performance. He didn't lose a single round from what I saw. And, you know, he got his man out of there. He, got, he stopped Baldonado. And it's looking like um, the next fight, as I mentioned before, will likely be a WBO showdown against Sho Kimura, the current champion. Um, you know, of course, Kosei Tanaka was a champion for the WBO at strawweight as well as at light flyweight. So it only makes sense that he would go after their version of the flyweight title as well, considering the fact that he has um, a history with them. He has a rapport with them. Um, as well as the fact that, you know, both fighters are J Japanese. You know, it's very, very easy fight to make. 
and um, it's a very exciting fight. You know, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Hopefully, it happens next. And if it does, then um, Tanaka will be doing some some big things. He would become a three weight champion in only 12 fights. Um, pretty significant, you know, without a loss as well. Um, so that's pretty much all I got to say about Kosi Tanaka. Uh, another great performance from him. Um, uh, if you guys want to see this video, um, I would suggest you guys go to uh, AsianBoxing.info. Um, really great, excellent site. Has a ton of videos um, from Japan, from throughout Asia, as well as um, I mean, uh, fighter. Pretty much any any fighter of. Uh, from from the, the the Asian sphere of influence, um, fighting around the world, they they'll have a lot of those fights. Big big um, big big uh, fight video um, repertoire that they have there. And uh, the this fight Tanaka versus Baldinado, that's how I saw it. And uh, I suggest you guys go over there check it out. Really good fight, really good performance from uh, Tanaka, and I'm really looking forward to the to the future of him because um, you know he's he's one of these guys that he has a stated goal. And he's going about um, trying to prove that stated goal. You know, he's going about trying to prove though those pound for pound chops, those um, those world level chops, those just um, you know he's trying he's trying to create a legacy for himself. He's trying to show himself to be a special fighter. Um, you know, I, I've criticized him in the past uh, for you know some of his some of his flaws. You know, as I even mentioned in this video, but he's definitely improving upon him. And you know, he's a young guy, only 22 years old, so he has um, he 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 has. Uh, time to improve upon him to a, to a certain extent but at the same time you know as as he continues to up his level of competition and up just the size level of his opponents um you know it's going to become all the more important that he continues to learn from whatever mistakes and whatever flaws that he currently has so that's going to do it for this one and i will catch you guys on the next one peace